What do they have in common? This SME, this NGO, this young person, this researcher and this farmer. They're all eligible for EU funding, which is available in a number of very different fields. Employment and social inclusion, agriculture and rural development, urban and regional development, maritime affairs and fisheries, research and innovation, and humanitarian aid. The financial aid packages vary from one area to the next, but there are three common principles. The subsidies should supplement other funding, the EU will not fund 100% of a project. Their objective should not create profit for the beneficiary, but help them strike a financial balance. And subsidies cannot be granted mm -hmm. retroactively for activities that have already been finished. More than three quarters of the EU budget is managed jointly with national and regional authorities via five large structural and investment funds. These are in line with the EU's Europe 2020 strategy for growth. The European Regional Development Fund. The European Social Fund. The European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. The European Maritime and Fisheries Fund. And the Cohesion Fund, whose aim is the economic convergence of regions within the EU. The European Parliament debates and votes on all these budgets. The national and regional authorities in charge of managing the funds can be called on to advise on maximising their use. The EU itself manages other funds directly. Grants from these go directly to specific projects or organisations, according to the EU's policies. This includes areas such as agriculture, youth or the economy. To benefit from these grants, applicants have to answer calls for proposals. And finally, there's also microfinancing. Self-employed people and businesses with fewer than 10 employees can benefit from microcredit. That is, loans of up to 25,000 euros. 